Hi guys, I'm Kendra and welcome back to my channel. Today is the blessed day of all days, which is the book haul. Oh my goodness, I can't even get over how much I love recording these, how much I love talking about these, and I love watching them. I just can't get over like new books, talking about books. I love to add books to my TBR. I love researching books. Like I am pretty much obsessed. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the books that I've received since my last book haul. I was planning on making it like within a month, but that just didn't happen. And I'm actually still waiting on a book, but whatever. It'll just have to wait and move to the next book haul. Why do I have so many books? Well, I have so many books because the Reading Women Award uh, has started. So Autumn and I are reading for the 2017 Reading Award, which is books published in the United States. And it's books by or about women. And we read them and... I'm more of the book scout, so I do a lot of research anyway because I'm obsessed, as I said. And I make this giant spreadsheet, and then I reread them, and then if we like them, we tell the other person, hey, you need to read this one, or so on and so forth. It works well for us, but if you have any books that you would like us to take a look at, uh, please email us at hello at readingwomenpodcast.com, and we will definitely keep our eye on that and put it on our list to read for the award. Today we are going to be going through books that I requested for that, also for the new Reading Woman newsletter, and um, books that were given to me, right? Okay. You've watched book hauls before, the, and you also know that the sound effects you're hearing behind the camera are in fact Dylan. Chewing. On his new bone. He got for Valentine's Day early. Because I bought it for him and I just couldn't wait. Right? Okay. Anyway, it's keeping him distracted. So let's start with the books. First up. Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller, and this is from Tin House. And if you are a Book of the Month subscriber, you know what this is about, but we're just going to keep talking about it. Uh, a guy's wife, she died, um, but not before leaving him hundreds of notes in his in books. And so it's about him reading them, also about uh, after she disappeared um, earlier in their life, their daughters also were trying to deal with it. I just like the cover. I mean, look at that. I like the cover. It sounds good. I read the first few. I read the first few pages. Can't talk. Uh, and look at that. Look at that design. Isn't that cool? Like, if you have a well-designed book, you get extra points with me. I'm just saying, especially end papers, obviously. Next up is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich, and this is from Random House. And this is indeed gorgeous. Like, look at this cover. Look at this cover. Oh my goodness. And it has like those deckled edges going on and oh it's beautiful um so what this is about is a uh, set in a town in northern idaho a woman is married to a guy whose first wife had a violent incident with an axe and her children and it talks about the ramifications of that um, i've heard nothing but good things about this book um so yes definitely on my list i'm so excited all righty so this one is the Gustav Sonata by Rose Tremaine, and this actually was published by Norton in 2016. So it's not up for the prize, but why wouldn't I want to read it? I mean, Simon uh, talked about it in his um, end of the year video. He had just read it and really liked it or something. So uh, I went and asked the publisher, um, and Norton is always wonderful. Thank you, Norton. You were great. And uh, this is about... Gustav Pearl grows up in a small town in Switzerland where the horrors of the Second World War seem only just an echo. An only child, he lives alone with em Emily, uh, the mother he adores, but who treats him with bitter severity. He begins an intense friendship with a Jewish boy his age, talented and mercurial Anton, a budding pianist. The novel follows Gustav's family, tracing the roots of his mother's anti-Semitism and its impact on her son and his beloved friend. Yes, so I actually went and I requested the audiobook from the library, so I'm going to be doing this on audio, but I wanted to take a picture of it for The Reading Woman and other fun things for this channel and stuff, and of course, if I love it, I want to own it, so there you go. So I'm really excited about this one. Thank you, Simon, for the recommendation, by the way. Next up is Pachinko from Grand Central Publishing, and this is written by Min Jin Lee, and uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I started reading this one actually. I'm about like 25 pages in or something. I'm reading Homerus Like You with Joss from Squibbles Reads. Uh, after I finish that, this one is definitely next. So I started reading this one and it does feel like Barkskin's 
like the slow burn that forces you to slowly savor it and read it and appreciate it. And if you try to rush, you're just going to ruin the experience. So this is about a family of Koreans who immigrates to Japan during the Japanese occupation. And it's about how no one will give them work, it, uh, really, and they have to live in like these ghetto slums and um, Pachinko is like a game and it's one of the only companies that will hire Koreans. So this is why the name where the name comes from. So yes, so excited. Look at that shiny, beautiful. Uh, and they actually did like patterned and papers. Way to go Grand Central Publishing. Oh, yes. Okay, but it is it is a chunkster. Not quite as big as Barkskins, but it is decent. Yes. Next up is We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter, and this is from Viking. And this is a Holocaust story about a family and their generations and how that, um, how the Holocaust affects their entire existence, basically. So this is going to be a hard book to read, um, but design highlight, check that out. Isn't that beautiful? Way to go, Viking. Yes. And you can see, um... On the cover, there are these notes and things, details. Like, that is just beautiful. Ugh. I love that cover. And the orange, it really, I think it actually works um, with the... Yes. All right. Next is Geekerella from Quirk Books. Um, and this is one of the best designed books I have seen. And, of course, a Quirk Books always does a fantastic job. You see these gorgeous end papers, and it has, like, this... Faux, uh, Star Trek symbol on there and oh my goodness it is so beautiful and if I were a teenager I would be all over this book and so this is a YA retelling of uh, Cinderella obviously and this is like you know her pumpkin chariot I'm assuming it's food truck and it's about like a guy who's an actor I guess see that would be the equivalent of the prince we'll find out I think this is gonna be one of the books that I pick up when I need just to escape from the current horrible political climate and I'm noticing that I've been picking up a lot of those recently. But I'm excited for this one. Next is uh, A Word for Love by Emily Robbins and this is by Riverhead who happens to my, be my favorite book cover designer. Um, yes, so this is shiny, obviously. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. They Riverhead also did like Fates and Furies, uh, The Mothers, and Separation. All fantastic covers. Pretty much any cover they put out is going to be gorgeous. And you'll note that a design feature on Riverhead's books is that the initials of the author go on the front. Sometimes they'll be stamped. Uh, sometimes they're this, um, what is that called? Anyway, it's gorgeous. Um, this book is about an American woman who goes to the Middle East and falls in love with, I think, the culture and the city and maybe a person. I don't know. But I'm really excited. So I, this is blurbed also by Khaled Husseini, who wrote The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons and um, I think when uh, the mountains, then the mountains echoed? Yes. Right. Because I just looked at that. Um, he says, told in quiet but elegant prose each thumb of this melodic novel's heart and what an enormous rousing heart it is attest to the timeless and life-giving power of love. Um, it could be a very important book for the time period that we are currently living in. We shall see. Last of the books that I have not read yet is this book called The Nakano Thrift Shop by Hiromi Kawakami and it's about a girl who goes and starts working in a thrift shop and uh, just the drama and whatever around her co-workers and her boss and stuff and the items in the shop having their own individual stories. So this is going to be really cool. Um, yeah, this is by Portobello, um, and I believe uh, from the punctuation and stuff uh, that this is, yes, has pounds on the front. So it is a UK edition, but this was sent to me by a lovely person from Singapore who's in my lit mail slash around the world book club, and it was for a Valentine's Day book exchange, so I think this would be perfect for that, and I really want to read more translated fiction. Um, that's not the project I'm working on this year, but um, it's definitely on my list of projects to do sometime in the future, and The Reading Woman usually does a translated fiction um, month, so we'll see. Because, of course, I want another month to talk about Elena Fronte, but incidentally, I would probably talk about this one. Uh, now to the books that I have read. I had a really rough uh, last couple weeks with migraines. They were just really, really awful. Uh, I must have been pretty pathetic, too, because Sam, my other half, took me to Barnes Noble and said, pick a book. 
So I wandered around there for like an hour, of course, and then ended up picking one I'd already read, and that is Bark Skins by Annie Prue. It is over 700 pages long. Um, I love this book, and the more I think about it, the more I love it, and I really want to reread it. But as I said, um, I usually do a chunk start in the summer, and it does force you to slowly savor it and to read it. You cannot, you cannot try to force your way to rush through this book. And for good reason, because it has a lot going on. So it covers like 150 years or something of two different families. Two guys immigrate from France to Canada, and one remains an indentured servant while the other guy escapes. So the one that remains, he marries an indigenous woman, and it follows the family of an indigenous people through the years. So the other guy uh, starts a timber business, um, and it talks about the deforestation of not just North America, but we actually go to New Zealand too, and we talk, look at the indigenous people there versus uh, the family of uh, the timber business, and then the, uh, the indigenous people are all woodcutters, so you have both sides of the coin there, and it's very well done, and she's what, in her 80s? So she's a master at her craft. Um, if you've never heard of Annie Prue before, she uh, wrote the short story Brokeback Mountain, which was turned into a movie. Um, yes, so I really... I really love this book. I know a lot of people struggled with the size and the pace because if the pacing because if you don't slow down it can be a problem and some people just don't have time for that and there are a lot of characters so it's not for everyone but I adore it and I would recommend it to anyone who wants a long slow burn kind of read. In addition to um, having a rough week because of migraines obviously my accent by my accent you can tell I'm American right so I live in America, which is now really, really struggling at life. I needed a, a distraction, and so uh, I picked up uh, Caraval, uh, which we talked about in my wrap-up. So I wanted to clarify from my wrap-up that you have to turn off your analytical brain to read this book. The writing is not great, the plotting struggles, but I found it just so enjoyable and fun to read. When I did turn off that, my, that part of my brain, I read this around inauguration, so it was great for distraction. It did its job. I really enjoyed it. However, if that's not the type of thing that makes you feel better, then don't read it. Like it is, uh, what, close to 400 pages or something? Uh, I, I really liked it. Um, I thought it was great. Um, I thought it was appropriately YA. A lot of times YA books I think are just a little too old for the broad spectrum because ages 13 to like 18, that's a wide range. So I think this is good for younger YA people and I would feel comfortable recommending it to all types of people. So yeah, like I recommended it to my mom because my mom really likes, you know, clean books and so I was like, yay, here mom, you'll like this book. So she's reading it right now. Hey mom, hope you like it. That is Caravel. Also beautifully designed. Like look at that. That's so pretty. Some people can't stand the writing and that's fine. I literally can't. I feel shame sometimes. Okay, another book that I read about a year ago uh, was The Star Touch Queen by uh, Roshani Chosky, and I finally, I, I, I'm sorry, I did butcher that name, um, but nevertheless, she wrote an amazingly fun book to read, and uh, I really like the arranged marriage fall in love trope, which is what this is. It also has Hindu mythology, and I'm obsessed with mythology. Oh my goodness, it is just so beautiful, and this is from... Uh, St. Martin's Griffin. Uh, it is gorgeous and beautiful and the second one is coming out and I have the digital arc of it but I really like the first one and the second one is this protagonist's sister so it's more of like a companion book rather than a sequel but whatever. I really enjoyed this and I thought it was fun and same with Caraval. The writing struggles a little bit, the plot struggles a little bit but it was a good mindless make you feel better type read which is what I always reach for when I'm not feeling well or it feel down or whatever so I would definitely recommend this for that I, it was just really fun and look at that cover gorgeous cover so that is all from me um, I really love talking about these books and I hope that you have found some new ones uh, if you have read some of the books that we're considering for the reading Moon award that I've talked about today definitely let us know at hello at readingwomenpodcast.com or just putting a comment down below and I will definitely check it out. I really appreciate any help 
in finding all of these, as I said, it's just the two of us running around trying to find books that we love, that we want to talk about. Tuesday is Valentine's Day. I have something special planned, so you'll definitely want to come back and check it out. So I guess I'll see you then. Bye guys.